What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Hyundai Accent, courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, I am in this one today because this is a very, very affordable subcompact car. There is one big change for the 2022 model year, which of course I will be going over in the video. Of course, you also have America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You also get three years of complimentary maintenance, which is a huge deal. You actually get that for all Hyundais to be fair, but it's going to save you a good bit of money with the oil changes and the tire rotations, things like that, that you're not going to have to pay for for the first three years. So that's pretty nice. And so in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about the accent from acceleration, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, braking, all of that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2022 Accent. First one being the SE, starting at $17,670. SEL for $18,925. And lastly, the Limited, starting at $20,625. And by the way, if you were curious, we actually do have that SE trim level with us today. So for future reference for the rest of this video, that's what we got. But powering this little beast is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 120 horsepower at 6300 rpm 113 pound feet of torque coming in at around 4800 rpm power sent to the front wheels through an ivt which stands for intelligent variable transmission essentially hyundai's version of a cvt in case you were curious but no manual transmission for 2022 that's kind of the big change for this one because a lot of people are passionate about having a manual transmission previously in 2021 you can get it 2022 they scrapped it. There's not many people buying those these days, unfortunately. But 0 to 60 time comes in at approximately 8.5 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 33 in the city, 41 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our 2022 Accent, I did want to mention there is a drive mode button located just in front of the shifter. When you press that, it is going to put you in sport driving mode. There's just that one sport driving mode here in the Accent. It did immediately downshift for me. So so it is going to hold the RPMs in a much higher level, giving you more power on demand, essentially adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity as well. But now as we are pulling up to a red light, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the accent here to the test, and let's see how quickly this thing is going to get us up to speed. All right, you guys, I think we found a straightaway. Good of a spot as any in three, two, one, go. We are in sport mode. It <laughs> revs high, man. Eh. I mean, it's a subcompact. What do you expect? It's actually not bad. It's a little bit quicker than I thought it was going to be for a subcompact. So you shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway, to be quite honest. 0 to 60 and 8.5 isn't that bad for this car. I've seen plenty of worse 0 to 60 time numbers than 8.5 seconds. Some of them even going up over 9 seconds. Some of them close to 10 seconds. So 8.5 seconds, it's not bad for what this car is. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So the braking is actually going to differ substantially depending upon which trim level that you go with. And so if you were to go with the SE trim level that we have today, you're actually going to get front disc rear drum brakes. However, if you were to go with the SEL or Limited, you will get four wheel disc brakes. So huge difference there when it comes to the braking. As far as that braking feel goes, it's actually not bad. I will say that. This thing definitely comes to a pretty nice stop. It's not a soft braking feel, which I appreciate. I really am not a big fan of soft braking feels. You guys probably know that if you watch my other videos. So it's actually not bad. And to be quite honest, I'm not sure you necessarily need the four-wheel disc brakes in this thing. Obviously, though, you're going to come to a better stop if you were to go with that SEL or Limited. A little bit safer situation there. But having said that, these brakes aren't that bad, to be quite honest, in our SE trim level. So actually no issues whatsoever when it comes to that braking feel. Then 
touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, torsion beam rear axle. As far as the ride quality goes, you are gonna feel a little bit more of the road when it comes to any subcompact car. So you do feel a little bit of that, but it's not that bad. It's definitely manageable. It's something I personally wouldn't have any issues driving on a regular basis. And certainly absorbing a lot more of the road imperfections than my old 2019 Ford Mustang GT did. So I'll just put it that way. But as far as steering feel goes, it's actually one of the first things I noticed. Usually Hyundai is known for having soft and loosey-goosey steering feels. But the first thing I noticed when I got in this one, it tends to lean a little bit more on the heavier side, at least comparatively speaking to all the other Hyundais that I typically drive. So I actually got to give Hyundai credit on this one. I don't mind the steering feel. Like I said, it does lean a little bit more on the heavier side of things or the normal side of things, I should say. So steering feel is plenty fine in this thing. As far as cabin noise goes, probably shouldn't be testing it right now. I'm going 20 miles per hour here in the woods. And well, obviously there isn't a whole lot of wind noise coming into the cabin now, but higher speeds with any subcompact, you are going to hear a little bit more of the road. But again, it's not something that would personally bother me. Then touching on visibility, I could see perfectly fine out the back. So rear visibility is definitely not going to be any issue whatsoever in the Hyundai Accent. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Accent. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Hyundai Accent finished in Palma granite red in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name definitely looks good here with all the red leaves and the red foliage here as uh, we begin the beginning of fall but anyways let's go ahead and make our way up front of the accent here chrome front grille is going to come standard for every single trim level across the board halogen headlights coming with the se and sel trims that is of course what we have today automatic feature coming with the sel trim level and up so we actually don't have that automatic feature here on the se believe it or not fog lights also coming on the sel trim level and up so that is why you are not seeing them here today anyways led headlights with led daytime running lights coming with the limited trim level and you actually do have some front air curtains located to the bottom corners there in case you were curious didn't expect them but it's kind of nice to see here on the accent but definitely a decent looking front end i think the headlights are becoming a little bit outdated so maybe they could redesign those in the future but other than that definitely a good looking front grill and front end to this one but Pretty much rounds out the front. Let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the accent. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, as the wind is obviously picking up here, chrome belt line molding does come on the SEL trim level and up. Otherwise, you are going to get these matte black window surrounds like we have here on the SE. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels, heated side mirrors for the SEL and limited trims with integrated turn signals for the limited trim level only. That is how you're going to go ahead and get that. Then take a look down at the wheel configuration, 15 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the SE trim level. That of course is what we have today. 15 inch alloys for the SEL and then 17 inch alloy wheels for the limited trim, but that pretty much rounds out the side of the accent. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around back, you guys can see that matte black antenna found all the way to the top. Just below that, if you wanted LED taillights, that is going to come on the limited trim level only. Otherwise, you will get the typical halogen bulbs like you're currently looking at right now. Just below it all, you will find some matte black accents towards the bottom portion of that rear bumper and Tucked away nicely on the passenger side, you will find a single exhaust outlet. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the accent, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, this is a little bit different than you may find on other vehicles. So I'm gonna emphasize this. There are two ways to go ahead and open that rear trunk. There's actually not a button on the trunk itself, believe it or not. So that's why I'm saying it's different because most other vehicles will have that. But there is a button on the driver's side floor, kind of near the door. That is one way you simply lift up on that. It's gonna pop the trunk for you. And there is a button on the key fob itself that is also going to pop that trunk open for you. So a little bit different than some other vehicles, but once opened up, cargo space comes in at 13.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning those rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space than if you needed it. 
And if you were curious, there is some cargo lighting back there. And if you lift up underneath of the cargo floor, you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix of flat in case you wanted to know that answer. But then making our way to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 33.5 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is me sitting behind my own driving position. So I was actually able to fit kind of nicely. And the best part is with not a whole lot of rear legroom, I always like to see that there is a little bit of give on the backside of the front seats as opposed to that hard plastic. So there is a little bit of give. If you have a taller adult, they should fit just fine because of that. But passenger side seat back map pocket coming with the SEL trim leveling up. There's no rear ventilation or center armrest with cup holders and you don't really need rear ventilation in this size of a vehicle anyways. But then making our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with all trim levels across the board but i will say if you go with that limited trim level you're actually going to get heated front seats so if you wanted that for these cold winters here in pennsylvania that is how you're going to go ahead and get that but actually believe it or not seats are plenty comfortable i've had no issues with seat comfort whatsoever in my short test drive here today so no issues there for me then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is wrapped in urethane for all trim levels across the board then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side, and then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop that rear trunk. But it is a push button start if you go with the limited trim level only. Otherwise, if you go with that SE or SEL, you are going to get the traditional turn key start. So therefore, all I am going to do here, simply put my foot on the brake and turn the key. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center giving you the basics like trip A, trip B, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, which is saying 374 right now. Not quite a full tank though, but still a decent range. Of course, outside temperature and the rest of the basics and average miles per gallon as well. That's pretty cool. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. There is a power sunroof if you were to go with the limited trim level only. Overhead sunglass holder though, coming standard for all trim levels across the board. Automatic climate control for the limited trim level only. Otherwise, you're gonna get the manual controls like you guys are currently looking at right now. Dual USB charging ports for the SEL and limited trim level, but you still get one USB charging port if you were to go with the SE, and we'll get more into that in a second though. But actually to the sides, let's get into that now. 12 volt power outlets, you get two of those, both the driver and passenger there. USB charging port, like I said, auxiliary port as well. Just below that, you got a good bit of rubberized storage so things don't slide around as easily. Just behind the shifter, you have dual cup holders and the old school parking brake, which I personally prefer. There's so many electromechanical parking brakes, he said, which is why I put it that way. And then just behind those cup holders, you get a little more storage and one singular cup holder in case you wanted that. So you do have one of those. So anyways, that is there for you. But otherwise, it is pretty practical and to the point. Nothing elaborate. But then again, I am driving a car that MSRP is for under $17,000. So it's actually not bad for that price range. I'll say that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. Because again, this is going to differ amongst the trim levels. Five inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE that we have today. And I think when I reviewed last year's accent, we had the big screen so it's kind of cool seeing this uh seeing this se screen just so i have reference but seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the se unlimited that's why i was putting it that way either way you got bluetooth and audio streaming however Android Auto Apple CarPlay only comes with the seven inch screen, meaning it's not gonna come on the SE trim level that we have today, unfortunately. But when it comes to the sound systems, you do a four speakers with the SE and then six speakers with the SE Ellen Limited. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out our four speaker sound system that we have in our accent here today. Oh, that. Hootie, Hootie, oh no, Darius Rucker, I think he goes by now. But anyways, it sounds like a four speaker sound system to be quite honest. The clarity is not there. The bass isn't a whole lot, but you know what? If you just listen to talk radio or you don't really care as much about the quality of that sound system, It'll get the job done for sure. Again, for the price point, it's kind of what I expected. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the accent in reverse, you will actually find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board. So even our five inch screen that we have today is going to show you what is behind you, which is pretty nice and which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS top safety pick 
if you were to go with the limited trim level only, and that's due to the LED headlights more or less. But front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. But if you were to go with the SEL or limited, you will also find a driver's side blind spot mirror. And if you were to go with that limited trim level only, you will get a forward collision avoidance assist system as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2022 accent this is an incredible value for a subcompact you not only have an msrp like we have today of under seventeen thousand dollars but you have america's best warranty so this car is warranted for 10 years on the powertrain if you drive less than ten thousand miles a year you have three years of free maintenance so if you're buying a kind of budget car anyways Three years of free maintenance is going to be a brilliant thing, and I personally love that on my own Hondas, to be quite honest. Also an IIHS for the limited trim level, which is kind of unheard of for subcompact cars, so I do want to emphasize that, although it's just for one trim level. In my personal opinion, I do believe the SEL is the best value when it comes to the Accent. You get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so free navigation displayed upon that infotainment screen. You get a better sound system with the six speakers. You get four-wheel disc brakes, and that's definitely a good thing if you want to come to a quicker stop and you get alloy wheels as well so essentially that's the reason i think the sel is going to be the best value for the accent in the end but let me know what you guys think of the 2022 accent in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold